Greetings, DMs, GMs, and players. This is the Insomniac GM. And to celebrate the fact we went into a new year, I want to go over my history and experience with tabletop role-playing games to just reflect back. Now, first off, I want to apologize for being MIA for a few weeks. Uh, my head's been cut off lately. And originally, I was going to release this video earlier, but I, it kept failing to upload, and finally I was just like, well, there was more I forgot to cover, so, yeah, so, let's begin. Um, so, I started off my experience with tabletop role-playing games back in 2006. Um, that was my freshman year in high school. And one of my friends, like, twisted my arm and forced me to join the Dungeons & Dragons Club. And I loved it. I loved role-playing. I loved playing this character. And most of all, I loved playing a game where there were an endless amount of choices. You weren't limited like a video game. Now, um, I will say, my first campaign I played, there were way too many players and our DM, he had a him versus us type mindset, I guess you could say, because we played that campaign for about maybe a year and a half, two years, and we didn't get any further in the game from session one. It was villain attacks, go find said NPC, no leads, no, like, we got no clues, no matter what we did, no matter where we went, um, yeah, and having 20 plus players did not help, but, um, the game itself left a good impact, so after this, I wanted to DM, unfortunately, I could not afford Dungeons and Dragons books, so I created my own game system and I will tell you right now, it is the worst, worst tabletop rule set I've ever seen and the worst campaign I have ever played or DM'd in. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever been in a game worse than that. And I'm sad to admit that was my game. Um, but that went on for a few years, and at the time, I ended up receiving some 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons books. So, 4th edition is actually my first tabletop books. Um, I never got to run. I was going to start up a campaign, and the game fell apart due to a breakup before it even started. Um... So after that, I just kind of sat around not playing it, trying to get a game going until 5th edition came out. And then a group of my friends and I got together and we started playing every week 5th edition. And I still game with most of that group to this day. Um, they currently play Pathfinder 2nd edition with me. But continue. Um, so during the beginning of that time of playing 5th edition, I started listening to a YouTuber named T the Writer. And T the Writer kept talking about Pathfinder. So I went out and I bought Pathfinder. Well, that sat on my shelf for the longest time, and I didn't play it till COVID, but um, that was really, I feel like that was the start of me branching out to other game systems other than Dungeons & Dragons. I know it's still technically, but outside of something without the name. So... Another video T the writer also mentioned, and I don't think he re-uploaded that video because he redid all of his videos, was OVA. 
an anime role-playing game. So I tried hunting that one down for the longest time and I ended up finding it by accident and bought it, which I'm actually supposed to be running a My Hero Academia one-shot for both my girlfriend and her niece, which is their first time playing tabletop role-playing games. So wish me luck. I hope they like it. But um, so OVA, that's the first time I'm gonna run it if I do. But so now I had 5th edition, Pathfinder, 4th edition, and OVA. Well, one of my friends kept begging me to get Call of Cthulhu. And I was getting deep into Lovecraft, like his stories and that. And I finally decided to get the books, which I got to run on Halloween finally. And these books here actually are the books I got from the club I was in for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I ended up trading some manga with one of my friends who got his hands on the club's books. So these are my first books I used for a game, not the first I owned. So very nostalgic. Um, I got Pathfinder first edition. I probably won't run 3.5, but it's more of a memory sake. Um, so I played a lot of fifth edition in the time it was out. And I actually joined a, for the first time I was in a campaign that ran from start to finish. There was an ending and it felt good to finally be in a campaign like that. Um, I also at that time started getting invitations to campaigns like that, but I noticed that a lot of those campaigns usually ran to about three sessions on average and it would just fall apart. Um, so after all that, I had one player beg me to let them play in a tabletop game of, to let them play in a tabletop game. They said that they'd be willing to play on anything. And at that time, I went with Starfinder because it was just close enough to D&D, but just different enough to like introduce something new to my players. So I had a few players and him sit down and play it and they fell in love with it, which formed a campaign and we in like this campaign, like we loved Starfinder. Um, however, that campaign ended up falling apart, um, fell apart due to the fact that there was a breakup. One of the players I had to end up kicking because he was being toxic to other players, um, due to work. And on top of that, when it came to the campaign, I didn't read the room well, and I presented a campaign that just wasn't for them. Like, they they wanted more silly, lighthearted, and, you know, I should have expressed better to them that I wanted to do more, like, mystery, like, you got to dig into, like, what's being said and all that. But, you know what? Bad games, you learn from them. Um, so, that game ended up falling apart. And we ended up, eventually, COVID ended up happening. And... I took some of my players from the Starfinder game, some from my normal 5th edition game, and brought them together who had bad anxiety to deal with COVID. 
So we started off running Pathfinder 1st Edition for the first time. Now, with this, I, um, that, so at that point, I treated this campaign like a TV show where every season is a different game system with a different cast of characters, but it's still the same story. So we did Pathfinder first, we did 5e, and we're currently doing Pathfinder second edition. Um, we're still doing it, but we've been dragging at that game because... We've had players who um, got promotions at work. One of our players went back to school. Um, I ended up moving. And we also had some players who had deaths in the family and that. So a lot has gotten in the way of that game. And at first, my players were getting a little frustrated that we weren't running until I pitched the idea of whoever can make it, we'll just go play a different game system. We'll do a one shot. And the only reason we didn't continue playing Pathfinder second is because out of my five players, usually only two would make it, sometimes one. And yeah. Um, so, they were very keen on this idea, especially with Halloween. I ran actual monsters in Call of Cthulhu for the first time. So that went pretty well. Um, now, I'm supposed to be running a Pathfinder 1st Edition game with lethal rules to play a lot more closer to the OSR. Um... Unfortunately, with how things have been, I've had to keep delaying the game. So, if you guys are watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can hear the furnace in the background at times. <laughs> um, and I did have one other potential game come up. I'm not sure how likely that is, but it's... um. Essentially, just running 12 different one-shots, where each one is a game system that is vastly different, starting with um, Crypt World, playing stuff like After the Bomb, Cyberpunk, etc., etc. I have over 50 RPGs. I think it's like 54 to be exact. But So... Ever since I ran Call of Cthulhu and Actual Monsters, I've finally been able to stop out of running just 5e. So, and games like 5e, like Pathfinder and other versions of D&D and whatnot. So, yeah, and I don't know how interesting this video is to you guys, but this was more something for me to kind of reflect back on. So, well, until next time.